Why did you settle on the name Icicle Works? Um, well, I, I like silly names for groups. I, I, I like uh, names like Strawberry, Strawberry Alarm Clock and all those kind of stupid names. Because uh, I just think it's fun, you know, it, it makes it not as serious. Also, Liverpool's got a tradition for having silly names for bands, and now and that, and that sort of went around the country, and everybody tries to have a silly name now. And then you get a band like the Smiths, who had a very ordinary sort of name, which was like a counter thing to, to what was going on. Um, I just think it's got a nice sound to it. I like imaginative titles for songs. I like imaginative lyrics. I like to think that somebody's actually thought about them. They didn't, didn't just scribble it down and say, uh, name of a group, Ashtray. Yeah, that's good. No one's done that. Wow, you know. So it, it actually looks as if we thought about it because we care that it's presented well and it's got a good sound to it, and I, I like it, you know. Where did you find it? Out it, of a book, didn't it you? comes from a book called The Day the High School Works Closed, which is a great title. I mean, the book's nonsense, but it's a great title. There's a lot of reje rejection in this business. Mm. What made you go on? Because there was nothing else that I wanted to do. I mean, you get knocked back. I mean, like, we got turned down by every record company, as every, every band does, and eventually they find one and they may go on to become successful or they may get dropped the next year. Um, I think if, if you get rejected, if you take it to the point where you say, right, I've had enough, because I know friends who've been in bands and they got so sick of it, and they thought, well, sod this for a lark, this is no good, I'm going to get a job, because then, and I can do the music at, at night, and I'll be bringing in a wage, and I can do all this. But once you get a job, I always resisted the temptation to get a car, because it makes you less hungry, I believe. And, like, I've got a car now, and, and I know what the feeling is. I feel as if I'm growing up because I've got a car. But uh, you feel as if when you, you're not sort of flirting around in a car or you you haven't got much money you feel as if you really got the drive to be successful so it, it softens you up when you get money I, I still believe that because I've definitely softened up a bit since I earned a few bob why don't you bother about an image which seems so important in the 80s the visual aspect um, well the thing is that I, I don't know to have an image you've got to sit down and like there was times when we were trying to get a record deal and we were finding it really difficult and an A and R men were saying to us, Oh look, you need an image, you gotta wear weird clothes, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you know. And we were going, But we don't like that, we've never done that. I mean uh, okay, okay, we'll have a go. And of course we never got round to doing it because we're not that kind of people, but we tried to sort of dress up a bit and to smarten ourselves up, but we've just accepted the fact that we're just like the scruffiest band going, you know. And we can't really get round that, so we've just got to hope that the music will do it. And if it doesn't, then, you know, we put dresses on or something. We've had one hit record, which was over a year ago now, which was called Love is a Wonderful Colour, which seemed to fit in very nicely with what was happening at the time. It was a sort of Phil Spector-esque type wall of sound, very sort of 60s thing, you know. And that did really well. Um, subsequent releases that we've put out haven't fared quite as well. I think it's because the nature of the band is to change as much as possible and to do as many different styles of music as, as we possibly can. For instance, on, on the new LP we've just done, um, we've got like a lot of heavy stuff on it, just guitars and all kinds of feedback and stuff. And we've also got Jacques Lucier, the, the jazz pianist, playing on one track. We just try to vary it as much as possible. And people who are really tapped into it enjoy it, but the people who sort of aren't particularly into us are sort of a little bit confused as to what we're trying to do, if anything. They say, well, hang on, the, it's a bit of a schizophrenic style of being in a group, isn't it? You know, like heavy and then really soft. And we do that more extreme than anybody else. America sort of uh, turned us into men, I think, if that's the right thing to say. We were sort of very nervous when we first went there, although we didn't think we were. We, were, we thought, oh, America, no big deal, you know, we just go to America and knock them dead and all this kind of stuff. And the first gig that we did in America was uh, opening up for the Pretenders at the um, amphitheatre in Los Angeles, and it was like about 6,000 people. And, it, and it's just like the biggest audience that we've ever stood in front of. So we were very nervous, but our sort of scouse bravado got us through it, you know, like we were getting a few sort of insults from the audience, so we just gave them back, and they loved it in the end, and we went down really well. But the whole tour that we did sort of 
we were doing so many dates that we, we've never played, um, like, night after night ever. We've only ever done weekends and stuff, it, you know, if we do that. So we were playing every night, so it, it became very apparent that we had to toughen up or we wouldn't be able to do it. And, like, I was losing my voice every third night because I wasn't singing properly because I didn't know how to do it and, uh, and all kinds of things like that. It just taught us how to be a, a proper performing live band. You know, we know much more now than we did then. What made you want to be a drummer? Um, I don't know if I don't know whether it's anything that makes you want to be a drummer. I've just got an urge to do it. I don't know what it was, you know. I just like listening to rock. I was very interested in music, and I, I think I'd had a go at the. My brother played guitar, and I've only got small fingers, so uh, I thought I'd have a go at the drums. Yeah. Well, you must have seen someone who. Uh, well, I was a big Ringo fan at the time, big Beatles fan. I like Ringo and Keith Moon as well. How do you survive between each record? Um, well, we between each record, we, we're learning new records and going on the road. We're, we never have any time off. We don't, we ne we've never sort of got anything not to do. We're always doing a lot, you know, either rehearsing or touring or doing demos for the next record, you know, and then we go and do the next record. So you don't really notice the gaps in between. Mm. But financially? Oh, well, we just get paid monthly. Anyway, whether we make records or not, it doesn't make any difference. Do you have much to live on? Or not, do you limit yourself? Yeah, you have to budget yourself, because you're given a certain amount of money every year, and then you've got to budget yourself to that, get paid every month. So how much do you budget yourself um, every month? Would I get you... about £60 a month. Oh, no, sorry, £60 a week. <laughs> After the Astoria concert, Chris, you were pretty ill. Yeah. Uh, I was sick into an ashtray. Uh, it's, that doesn't happen every night, but that, that day, for some reason, I was really ill. I, I don't think I'd eaten. I think I was a little bit nervous, maybe, about the gig. And uh, very heavy lighting as well on that show, and it was just so hot, and eventually it took, it to it took its toll after the, the last song. But it was all right, like, you know. But what does it take out of you physically, drumming, um, every night? I don't know, really. It's... it's there's a lot of sweat involved, you know. I seem to sweat a lot more than the other two. It's a much more physical thing, you know, drumming. But I, I like it. I like working up a sweat, you know, it's great. You're not a very large person. No. <laughs> so where do you get your energy? I don't know, it's just something, it must be like the uh, adrenaline from a, sh you know, a show with the audience and that. It just seems to, I don't, don't know where it comes from. You know, when I watched a video, I thought, God, do I? Because at the time, I don't really realise that I'm, putting that much into it, you know. The first time I saw it was playing live. So, God, you know. How did you manage to break through from Liverpool into the London music scene? Um, a lot of, a lot of gigging. We, we played, you know, in London quite a lot of times. Uh, just playing pubs and basically calling round to the record companies and, you know, sleeping on the doorstep and generally making pests of ourselves, you know, until we got through to them. What do you think of the music business? Uh, how, how long have I got to answer that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it's full of discrepancies, but um, it's not all that it's built up to be. Um, I think a lot of people think it's uh, a life of you know glamour and excitement, and it's not really. Very often, it's travelling around in the back of vans and you know playing pubs and things like that. But uh, it is exciting, yeah, but it's not very, not very glamorous. And all that. Do you want to be rich and famous? Yeah. Definitely. Well, it, it'd be very nice, yeah. Yeah, it would be, because, uh, you know, I've got, like, I've got uh, an old car that needs repairing at the moment, so it'd be, it'd be handy to uh, get, get some money in to get that repaired, you know. Just, I don't know whether I want to be ex exceedingly rich and famous, just enough to sort of uh, a yacht and things like that, you know. You wouldn't mind losing your privacy? Uh, I don't think it would, actually. No. Uh, I'd probably quite enjoy it for a while. It often messes people up, though. It seems to in the music business. Aren't yeah. you afraid of that? Uh, well, perhaps people bring that on themselves, you know. Um, a lot of people in the music business often sort of uh, bring, as I say, sort of bring their own fate upon them. Uh, there are a lot, a lot of people who've sort of weathered the, the sort of... Um, you know, the mass acclaim and everything can seem to be all right. 
But I never really see this group as, as being in that sort of bracket. I think whenever you reach something that you've always aspired to, although you, you feel good because you did it, I, I don't find myself sort of going, hey, you know, I've just done that, or I've just, I, I've managed to do what I, I always wanted to go to America, blah, 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 you know, done it. I, you don't sort of stop and say, wow, I've really achieved something. You, it's just like, you know, the, the lads in the band, we sort of just look at each other and go, you know, it's no big deal. It's just every time you get to something, it's always behind you. And then you're looking for something else. I always wondered how, like, um, idols of mine, like, say, Pete Townsend and stuff, could sit on telly and be interviewed and come across as a complete manic depressive. I was going, why is he depressed? You know, he's, he's a genius. You know, he's got all the money in the world. Everybody loves him. It's great. He can do whatever he wants. You know, what, what's wrong? And, uh, and obviously, as soon as you achieve everything that you want to, you, you want to find something else that excites you, and that's probably why he, he got like he was. And um, although I'm nowhere near the, the same sort of position that he is, I mean, like, a thousand miles from it, I can see, now I can look ahead and say, well, if I did get to that, I can see why he felt that way when he got there, because you still need something else, you know. Perhaps that's why bands turn to religion and stuff and all kinds of, of weird things. Perhaps it's why they turn to drugs, because they need some kind of stimulus all the time. And when you've got money and women and everything you want, what, what else is there to want? You know, they want happiness and that money doesn't bring that, does it?